everyone. Uh, I'm Nikhil. Uh, thanks for the intro. Um, how many of you have used uh, bank reconciliation in ERP Next? Okay. How many of you uh, have you used like you know bank rec in let's say QuickBooks, right? So you see a huge disparity, right? Like in terms of like the experience, like QuickBooks is like goated in terms of uh, their bank rec experience. Uh, so yeah, so uh, about us, uh, I'll just be very brief. Uh, we are the Commit company. We build uh, open source apps. Most of them are in the Frappe uh, ecosystem. And uh, our flagship product is Raven. Uh, which is a chat app. Uh, some of you might have heard of it or used it. We also work a lot with Frappe and React. Um, so yeah, that's a brief. Uh, okay, why? Why build this tool? Well, my mom is also my chartered accountant. So she handles all the accounting for our company and my personal accounts and everything. So every year around this time when we have to file taxes, you know, it's the most, uh, I would say the most frustrating part of the year for me because I have to reconcile my banks and I don't like that. Uh, so I cry, uh, I procrastinate. This time around, I decided I'll procrastinate by building a tool. Uh, so I won't do my accounts, but I'll build a tool to do it. Um, so in terms of why, you can look at the current bank rec tool and I'm sorry, it's all in you know light mode. Sorry for your eyes. But the current bank rec, uh, first of all is, it requires a lot of clicks. The UX is not really great, right? Second, there are a few missing features. For example, if you wanted to transfer money from one bank account to another or for a credit card payment, let's say, can't do that. Um, you can't split transactions across multiple, uh, you know, GL accounts, can't do that. Then overall in, in ERP Next, the banking function itself is split across multiple reports and multiple modules. like. You have bank rec statement, bank rec tool, bank clearance summary, then bank transactions it's, itself is different. So there's like all sorts of things, you know, all of the features are there in ERP Next, they're just not consolidated, right? So uh, that's why I built uh, Mint. This is how it looks broadly, right? Wherein what we have done is, is essentially consolidate all of the banking functions in ERP Next into one singular UI, right? Uh, and yeah, let's, let's start with the basics of Mint. So Mint is a single page React app. It's, it just runs on slash Mint. So whatever your site name slash Mint. Um, and then, you know, what we have done is essentially you can select your company over here. Uh, I have focused a lot on making this really, really high quality. Like, uh, so for example, date range, you know, I can set a date range, like I can just type like uh, 2nd May 2025 to 4th June 2025, right? And I can just type and the date range changes. So there are things like that. Right now I want uh, to, you know, do it for this because I have fake transactions. Actually, it's not fake. It's real transactions. So this is going to be a little embarrassing anyway. Um, but yeah, so uh, you have a date range picker and you have a company picker. Once you do that, you get all your bank accounts at the very top, right? Uh, these are all your bank accounts or anything. I mean, a credit card could also be technically a bank account in ERP Next, right? It's just linked to a liability account instead of an asset account. Uh, so you can see I've got a bunch of savings accounts, credit cards, and I can scroll and look at all of those, right? Just below that, you'll see that there is a opening balance, closing balance as per system, and then whatever your statements, closing balances, you put in over there, and you see the difference. This is similar to the bank rec tool. It's the same functionality. And then you have a progress bar that shows you how many transactions in this time frame have you reconciled. So it's sort of also gamified in a way. Um, yeah, so those are the basics. Uh, I won't tell you what the opening balance, closing balance is, but essentially what the system thinks uh, is should be your opening and closing balance as per your bank statement based on all the entries that have been cleared so far. Uh, so as you reconcile more transactions, those values change, right? The goal of a bank rec exercise is to get that difference down to zero. That's all, right? Now, 
this is what I was talking about that what we have done is that we have essentially unified all of these reports into one singular interface because if you think about it, you just need to select the company, the date range and the particular bank account, right? And then you get the bank rec statement. Uh, you get the list of all the bank transactions for that time frame. You get the bank clearance summary, which is essentially any accounting entries that have been posted against this particular GL account and incorrectly cleared entries, which is a very uh, unknown report in ERPNX, which allows you to see any entries that have a, uh, a clearance date. So the, so the entry is cleared before the posting date. So it's all unified, right, in one singular interface. So you don't have to, you know, have multiple browser tabs to do this uh, and set the same time, you know, time filter, I mean, date filter and bank. So we'll get to the nice part now. So. On the right hand side, or sorry, on the left hand side, you'll see a list of all your unreconciled transactions, right? And you also have a search bar. And this search bar actually allows you to search for, uh, you know, things in like fuzzy search. So you could search for, let's say, Swiggy, but you, if, even if you miss a G over here, it will still give you those transactions. So it supports fuzzy search. You can filter by amount and you can filter by type, whether it's a debit or a credit or all. By default, it would be all, right? Now, uh, the fundamental thing uh, that, you know, we do in Bankrec, uh, sorry about that, yeah, is that we actually match transactions to uh, vouchers. So let me see which bank account has the match because I forgot, so I've written it down. Okay, it's in HDFC. Okay, so uh, for example, this one, right? So this is a payment for 3200. Now in ERP Next, when you do matching, it doesn't really highlight that, hey, you know, this is the suggested one. Usually the first one is the suggested one, but there is no highlighting. And also in when you're matching transactions and reconciling, you what you're looking for is like visual indicators that the date is the same, the reference is the same, amount is the same, right? So in this case, you know, this is actually highlighted as suggested. And uh, so you just hit reconcile and you're done, right? So, and then it moves on to the next transaction and the next transaction and it sort of, you know, it just goes on and on. Same thing you could do over here for the, for this transaction and then you can hit reconcile. If you want to, uh, uh, you know, change what is shown over here, you can also, you know, pick uh, these settings, whether show only exact amount or payment entry, journal entry. I usually just keep these two, but you might have other vouchers. For example, if you have already marked a purchase invoice as paid, then you would need it. Um, so yeah, that's the matching function. The next function is to uh, create a payment for it. So I'll, I'll just hit reconcile for this one. And now let's say that I want to create a payment, uh, you know, let's say this, this transaction for 2,360 rupees. This is actually a payment to Frappe Cloud, right? So if I click on record payment, I can actually select the supplier here and it allows me to select the particular invoice uh, where I need to apply it. So this is again not there in the current uh, bank rec tool. So you can just select the invoice and you can hit submit and you're done, right? Uh, same thing you can do with sales invoices. So I'll just show that as well. So for example, in this payment, you know, this is a payment from my company. So I'll just pick this and then it's the first one, I know that but you'll see that the amount that I received was 2,80,800, but my invoice was for 3,6,800, right? This includes GST and all. The problem is that over here, the uh, TDS was deducted. So what I can do is that I can just click on this button. It says the invoice is not fully allocated. So I just click on that button. It allocates it fully. Then I can, you know, I see a difference of 26,000. I click on that and it allocates an, uh, a charge or deduction. And then over here, I can just search for TDS. Now, one of the things that I've also focused on is like the experience over here, right? When you're using account dropdowns in, in Frappe, uh, you know, any link field, right? Uh, it doesn't do a fuzzy search. And that drives me nuts. Like if I want to search for like miscellaneous expenses and I misspell it, you know, suddenly it goes off and I don't get that option. What we have done over here is that we have fetched the entire chart of accounts. And so our account dropdowns, whenever you type, there is no network request whatsoever, right? It just searches locally and it's all uh, based on fuzzy searching. So, and you also get a hierarchical view, like you see bank accounts, investments, you know, it's all, it's all in a hierarchy in the chart of accounts. 
if I search for TDS, I actually need tax deducted at source. But if I search for TDS in the link field in, in Frappe, you know, it wouldn't, sh it would just show me the first one, which is TDS payable. So yeah, you just do that and you hit submit and you're done, right? So that was recording a payment. I showed both supplier and customer. Uh, the next thing that you could pro possibly do, right, is have transfers uh, between accounts. So for example, this is a credit card and I have a credit card payment for 27,000 some odd rupees, right? Um, I can hit transfer. The, the problem with transfers is that actually I need to reconcile both banks. I need to reconcile where the money came from and where the money went to, right? So if I hit transfer over here, it actually automatically figures out that, hey, you know, there is a equivalent amount on around the same date from this bank account. And if I select the use suggestion option, right, it automatically, you know, figures out the account. And if I transfer it, it will actually reconcile not only this transaction, but the transaction in this uh, FI account as well, in this other bank account. So if I hit transfer, that's done, right? The other thing uh, that I liked about uh, QuickBooks was that you could split a transaction. So in bank entry, we give you the entire journal entry experience. So you can have, for example, in this case, you know, it's allocated to drawings, but let's say if I wanted to do 400 over here, difference is 557. I hit, uh, you know, I just click over there and it adds the difference entry and then I can, let's say, put it to business expense or something, right? And I hit submit. So you can actually split transactions directly from Mint. Uh, next, uh, let's say if you wanted to do it in bulk, a lot of times what happens is that, I mean, you can look at the amount of, you know, orders that I've placed on Swiggy, uh, not healthy. Uh, so you can just click, you know, shift, shift, I mean, not this one, but, you know, shift. And all of these four transactions, I want to post it to the same account. I can just hit bank entry and I can reconcile in bulk. So drawings and hit submit and you're done, right? So you can do it in bulk as well. Um, and then finally, the, the last step uh, over here is automating things with rules. Like every time I see Swiggy, I know that it needs to go to a particular account, right? So we have a rules mechanism as well. So for example, I've set up a rule for food delivery transactions. Anything that says Swiggy, Bundle, Zomato, Blinkit, you know, the food delivery apps that we have over here. Uh, and if it's a withdrawal, right, there is no min and max amount. But if it contains any of this, and I can add crazy rules, like I can add starts with, ends with, and even a regular expression if you are, you know, feeling, you know, crazy. Uh, so yeah. If that rule matches, I want to create a bank entry with drawings, right? This is the rule. Similarly, you can have other rules. I have one for Uber, one for software expense, so on and so forth, right? And then I can drag and drop these as well. So it is essentially a priority order of rules, right? So if the first rule matches, then it won't evaluate the second rule for a particular transaction. Once you've created these rules, there's a, there's a scheduler that runs and it automatically, you know, categorizes transactions. So this one, for example, is Swiggy. I can just create bank entry and it's automatically filled in everything, even the account. And I just need to hit submit, right? So I can just keep doing this. So, uh, yeah, those are rules. I don't know, I had, I only had 15 minutes. I recorded a video for YouTube that took like 50 minutes. So uh, technically I've covered all the features. So I don't know how much time that took, uh, but, yeah, I think, I think that's pretty much it. You've got, so uh, I'll just see if my slides have anything else. So yeah, you can match to existing vouchers, like, and it highlights it. You create vouchers on the fly. Uh, you can do it in bulk, right? Just press shift, select multiple transactions and post it to a particular bank entry. Um, oh yeah, I forgot about this. Okay, let's say sometimes, you know, you you might have made an error, right? So for example, this one is Indigo, which is an airline. Let's say I created a bank entry and I put it to drawings, but I, I actually want to put it into travel, right? And I hit submit. Now I can actually hit just undo over here. This is way too complicated in ERP Next because in ERP Next you have to understand, okay, which payment entry was created or which journal entry was created. Uh, so it's way too complicated in ERP Next and then you have to, you know, cancel that entry over here. What we do is that when you do a reconciliation, if you've matched it, then we store the reconciliation type as matched. But if you have, uh, 
if you created a new voucher, in this case, we created a new journal entry. And if you hit unreconcile, what it will do is that it will actually cancel the journal entry itself. So canceling the journal entry will unreconcile the bank transaction. So I hit unreconcile and that's it. You can also unreconcile later. So in your bank transaction list, for example, you know, you can hit undo and you can see what the details were, how it was created and you can hit unreconcile. And, you know, then it will come up over here as annual fees, for example. So, uh, yeah, that was one feature that I forgot about. Automating with rules, discuss that. And then the rules come up like that. Uh, yeah, that's Mint. Uh, it's open source. It's available on Frappe Cloud. Uh, so yeah, if there are any questions, you know, I would, uh, I can take them now. Hello. In the first slide, when we are uploading the bank statement, why do we need to put the bank balance as per statement? It should auto pop out. Uh, well, bank balance as per statement is what you see on your statement, right? Right. The, it should match the closing balance, the, the second value. No, I understand. You are saying that we have to upload the bank statement as well to do the reconciliation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So why in the third third part enter the closing balance as per statement? Do we need to type or it will auto-populate? Uh, no, you would have to type. If you use an integration like Plaid or something, then that automatically brings in the closing balance as per statement. Uh, but over here, because you could you could upload your statement in parts, right? I could upload last month's transactions first, and then I could upload, you know, the, the previous month's transactions next. So it doesn't track it that way, right? At least ERPNX doesn't. Okay. So this is just a replica of ERPNX. I don't even put in the closing balance as per statement. I do it at the very end once that progress bar shows 100%. Okay, got it. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, if we use a PLAID or the integration created where directly bank is connected, so it will automatically fetch here also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same doc types and all. So we haven't done anything else. So, uh, for example, I use it with the Razor Pay X integration that Resilient Tech has built. So Razor Pay X brings in all the transactions automatically, that integration. And then I just come to mint and reconcile. Okay, so, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, over here. I just want to ask you about uh, implementing this tool for banks. This tool is, impl uh, is good for maybe accountant or for uh, individuals. But did you try to enhance it to become like a conciliation system for a bank or anything like that? I mean, I don't know how banks operate. I just know how my mom likes my accounts. So, uh, but I could, like we can, we can discuss, but I am honestly, I don't know what, how banks operate. Uh, so. Okay, maybe we can talk later. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, there's one more question. Okay, that's the last question because uh, there's a huge timeout placard over here. Uh, <laughs> what was the most challenging part about building this? Any specifics that you can share? Uh, most challenging part was uh, procrastination. Uh, honestly, it wasn't that challenging because this was a problem that I related to personally, right? Because I used to do this like every single day. I mean, not every single day. I actually did it once a year. So it was more painful. You know, I made it more painful for me. So it wasn't that difficult, uh, you know, we are very good at React now, like, so we can build user interfaces very quickly. So I thought about this, like, since last Frappeverse, right? And then I built it in two weeks. So I built it, like, last month in two weeks. So, yeah. I, I think the thinking part took time. That's it. All right. Uh, that's it, I guess. Thank you.